the whole quality of life in our region depends on this water and this watershed. It's a beautiful watershed, uh, and those of us who live here, I think, take it for granted. There really are a lot of risks. We might not see them, but they're there. There's no one killer stress that we face. Instead, there are a series of stresses that we're struggling with that cumulatively could push us back decades. This large forested area at the tops of the hills and the mountains of Pennsylvania and New York, this is where our watershed starts. This is where rain and groundwater start to filter down. If you really want to know how healthy the stream is, you have to look at the things that are living in there, especially the animals and the food of the animals. I'm down by We temporarily stun the fish. And we count them, identify them, and measure them, and then we put them back, and they go back to their life in the stream. Brown trout, 39.3. When we see a diverse fauna, that shows us that the stream is in good condition. This big block of forest at the top of the watershed is like a big sponge that is filtering water. It's making sure that all the water coming down is clean. Forests are incredible filters. At the beginning of the water's journey in the headwaters, the water is pristine. If we were doing our job, the water would stay that way at every step of the way down. Every time a piece of forested area is developed, it's one piece of the puzzle that degrades water quality. I mean, you know, What's the nearest you know, Pennsylvania forest land here? The Birchboro it... Waters, the forest legacy easement. Yeah, this, this is all, this whole entire thing is a forest legacy easement. So you can build off of that. Well, but I think building off of I mean, what Bill said, to get a couple of these projects in and a couple of the landowners, these landowners, conservation is not on their radar because th there hasn't been anything in this region for decades. I mean, or, or very well, where the clean water is is, is is not a secret, but it's the identifying the landowners um, and finding the willing landowner. The, you know, that's, that's the key to a project. No single organization can do it by itself. The power of all of us working together is what makes the difference. That water is going to travel hundreds of miles through forests and developments and all the farms in between. When I go onto a farm property, a thought that goes through my mind is anything that that farmer is putting on that land, as soon as it rains, that gets washed into the creek. They could be putting fertilizer and pesticide down on the ground. If the farmers have animals or livestock, they're inputting bacteria, which isn't healthy for humans and other animals. Is phosphorus the main impairment in here that the buffer would be able yeah. to help with? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, and then there is also an issue with bacteria. Okay. So but phosphorus and bacteria is what it's impaired for. Do we have a sense of where that's coming from yet? The loss of water quality in the Del River watershed has occurred property by property. And so the solution to that really is restoration across a thousand or more different private little landowners and having them just implement small changes in their backyards. I'm the sixth generation of dairy farmer in the Musconetcong Valley. My daughter and my son-in-law in North Warren County are farming and, and my granddaughter. And uh, it's kind of like another legacy that has kept on. We can work with the farmers to help add protection around that stream, a sponge around the stream, which contains shrubs and trees, which is called a buffer. It will help to reduce that pollution coming off their landscape. It's putting back to nature around uh, a stream or aquatic area that benefits from it because of the uh, natural habitat that it protects. 
It's beautiful. When we did the Brothfer, it cost me basically nothing, just our labor and our time. But what I gained from it is uh, totally worth more than that. The brook that we were on previously enters into this tributary, which is the Muskinacong, and then exits into the Delaware River, or the Delaware watershed. And that's my motto, to leave it better than what we found it. In the past, the primary threat to the Delaware was from the end of the pipe, where polluters would send toxins into the river. The pipes of pollution from industry and treatment plants that are going right into the river, that's easy compared to what we're faced with now, which is a million points of pollution from every road, every yard, every farm, uh, every piece of land that was forested that cleared, all of those places contribute pollution. The challenge today is that the enemy has become so diverse. The enemy is really all of us. The threat today is really a death by a thousand cuts. A city like Philadelphia, the streets are covered in all sorts of chemical pollution. There's trash, there's motor oil. And when it rains, that stuff all washes down the drain. And all this is really bad news for the river, which is our source of drinking water in the city. So here we are under the elevated train line above Frankfurt Avenue. And we're looking at one of these channels here that directs rainwater off of the road surface down towards the rain garden at the lower end. Much of the water that's in our creeks and streams has actually come from further upstream and suburban areas outside of the city. The watershed is impaired. It has too much nutrients, too much phosphorus, too much sediment from lawns, from roadways, from sidewalks. When it rains, it takes with everything, with all its man-made chemicals. All the water flows into these drainage systems end up in a waterway in our watershed. And ultimately, the people of Philadelphia drink this water. Yes, it's true, death by a thousand cuts. But if we do our jobs, it can actually be the reverse. Give me life and health through a thousand small steps. The city is doing some really exciting things. Projects like rain gardens, um, tree trenches, green roofs, these are all designed to absorb rainwater where it lands before it ever gets down into that stormwater system. The water that's coming off the street is now being channeled into this garden now the rain garden here is all planted up with all sorts of native vegetation that's going to help absorb that water. In a few weeks, we'll see a lot more color. Uh, the butterflies and the birds will start to come in as the flowers come in. It's great to see a community take these ideas and really put them into action. Water does not follow a political boundary. The political boundaries are drawn on a map by the municipalities from two or 300 years ago. The water follows a watershed. It goes from the mountain, down to a valley, down to a river and stream, and eventually to the ocean. This is the test. The water that heads out to the ocean, is it as clean and plentiful as when it began its journey? Have we protected it? Did we do our job? Remember, this water may be spread across four states, across thousands of county and property lines, but it's a single water system. So every stream has a connection. Every stream has a downstream. 
and everybody has a vested interest in it.